1945, Soviet troops entered the Auschwitz Birkenau extermination camp. The last extermination center still functioning under the Nazis. They found 7,650 survivors. Some one and a half million people were murdered there, including 960,000 Jews. Auschwitz Birkenau has become the symbol of the Holocaust and a willful, radical evil in our time. What the liberators found in these camps astonished them. They came as soldiers and left as liberators. They had been trained for combat, and most of them had barely even heard of these camps. Upon entering the camps, the soldiers encountered thousands of starving people who had witnessed murder, torture, starvation, and had been dehumanized. Colonel Lewis Winston remembers the first camp liberated by the U.S. Army. We had heard all kinds of rumors and stories, but they were so horrible that they were indescribable. We just couldn't believe them. I had a great guilt feeling when I actually found out about what happened in these camps. I had talked in terms of possibly a few thousand have been mur murdered, but thinking in terms of six million murdered, I was obviously very much taken aback. Father Edward P. Doyle, who was a cap chaplain in the American Army, described what he saw upon liberation of a Nazi concentration camp. I was there. I was present. I saw the sights I will never forget. On that morning, I knew why I was there. I found the reason for it. Man's inhumanity to man. What was happened to that beautiful commitment? of God to love one another. The following is taken from a series of poems written by Barbara Helfgott Hyatt, who was inspired to write the poems based on testimony by the liberating soldiers. Our men cried. We were a combat unit. We've been to Azinos to southern France, Sicily, Solerano, the Battle of the Bulge, and we'd never seen anything like this. When we saw the ovens, we were silent. Not a word spoken, not a single expression. Not, oh Jesus, not. What is this? Not what have we done? I don't know that we were so angry. We were too dumb for that. Shamol Krakowski, a survivor of Auschwitz, was 19 years old at the time of liberation here at home. I woke up that day just on the day before and all the previous days, very, very hungry. I don't remember who was the first that morning to look out the window. I will remember his cry of joy. Boys, the Russians are here. We were liberated. Me, I'm a parent's son. A house that survivor was a young woman in 1945, 20 years old when she was liberated in Lulu. Oh, she counts. I remember that I picked up a flower in the garden and gave it to the first Russian soldier I saw as a mark of appreciation for the liberation. We were so happy, and we thought this was the start of a new life. After the extremely harsh conditions of the camp, the simplest pleasures seemed heaven sent. Ephraim Kramba, 20 years old when liberated, described his first time having a hot bath after, after liberation. We washed. They gave us soap. When did I last wash? I couldn't remember. Hot water. Whoever saw hot water. It was a dream. As much, as, as much hot water as you want to wash with soap. With soap. You could even wash your head, your body. It was heaven. It was heaven on earth. However, liberation was a bittersweet time for those who remained alive. As happy as they may have been to see the end of their harsh incarceration, too much of the survivor's world had been destroyed to truly rejoice. Helen, who experienced life in that house in their calls. We saw a tank and an American soldier. He started screaming, you are free, come out. The strangest thing happened. There was no jubilation. A terrible sound of moaning sounded. Everybody was crying. They started thinking of those who did not make it to this moment. Once the prisoners had been freed, the search for family members began. Many of those searching for loved ones were unsuccessful in finding any relative. Doug Freiberg, a survivor of Survivor, realized that he was the only surviving member in his large family. He states, My eyes are riveted upon the expanse of destruction. Does nothing really remain? All of the masses has not a person survived. Of my entire family, only I remain. How did it happen that all of them are dead and I'm the only one alive? Joshua Buck Buckler, who was only 15 years old when he was liberated, describes his futile search for his family members after liberation. When I arrived in my town, I met few, a few relatives and there were 
was great excitement. I asked, where is father? I was certain he was at home. We do not know where your father is. Wasn't, what isn't father at home? Then I learned that no one had come back, that I was alone, that alone I had returned. Although we had seen a lot and experienced the worst, we still had hope, still had dreams. All those days we had struggled to survive, hour after hour, day after day, there had been no time to grasp the enormity of our tra tragedy. Now everything became clear. No longer were our families waiting for us. No homes to go back to. Ava Brown, who survived all experience and was levitated as plasma and from the cross. After the war, we had prayed for liberation, and here it was suddenly. You are free. When I heard about freedom, I was also very frightened. How did one behave in a normal world? We were frightened that we might not have anyone left in the world. Worry about the future weighed heavily on me. We had to build a future, but how does one build a future? How does one build a future? As they welcomed their freedom, all survivors grappled with this question. Many of the people who survived the Holocaust were able to rebuild their lives, create new families, and con contribute to the societies of which they became a part. Despite their loss and tragedy, they undertook the decision to return to life. By the end of 1945, many Jews decided not to return to their hometowns and villages to, and perform, preferred to remain in displaced persons' camps. These temporary DC, DP camps were set up by the American Army throughout Germany in order to provide a place to live for all those survivors who had nowhere to go. In DP camps, Jews did not wait for a permanent dwelling place in order to start over. They married and started families. They set up schools, published Jewish newspapers, established theaters and orchestras, and looked over, looked for ways to search for and commemorate their loved ones. In this testimony, Leiser Elder reflects on the three years he spent in DP camps. People got married. They would take a hut, hut and divide it into ten, ten tiny rooms for ten couples. They desired. The desire for life overcame everything. In spite of everything, I am alive and, and even living with intensity. After such a destruction to build a new life, to get married, to bring children into the world, and forgotfulness lay the ability to create a new life. Somehow the desire for life was so strong that it kept us alive. And yet, a primo Levi, primo Levi a Holocaust survivor and well-known author, wrote a powerful omission to the generations after Ashwaltz against forgetting. One of his famous poems is called Shema, which in Hebrew mean, means to listen. He implores his readers to hear what he is saying. In this section of the, his poem, Shema, he invokes the style of Hebrew prayer to request that the story of the Holocaust is re repeated and never forgotten. I commend these words to you, engrave them, onto your, engrave them on your hearts. When you are in your house, when you walk on your way, when you go to bed, when you rise. Repeat them to your children, or may your house crumble. Disease will you powerless, your offspring avert their faces from you. Although survivors have been liberated, they were not always emotionally and mentally free. Until this day, many of them find it difficult to live with their Holocaust memories. Dr. Zelman Grinberg, who survived Dachau, spoke the following words at first at the first ceremony, making liberation from Nazism in the summer of 1945. We celebrate <coughs> the liberation at the same time. It is a time for mourning for us. For every bright and joyful day at present and in the future is shadowed by tragic events of the past years. We are, we are free now, but we don't know how to begin our free past unfortunate lives. We have forgotten how to laugh. We cannot cry anymore. We do not comprehend our freedom. Erica Amarjilo, a Holocaust survivor, describes how bearing testimony about her Holocaust experience gives meaning to her life. Today, I have seven grandchildren, Lior, Iris, Tomer, Omri, Charles, Erica, and David, for my grandchildren and to all the children of the world of any religion. I have written a testimony 50 years later so that they will be able to reply to any who dares to deny that there was a Holocaust. And to that, they will always be on guard to make sure that there will never be a Holocaust again. Blessed are 
Let us conclude with this plea that is as universal as it is timeless. Must cruelty always be, must inhumanity ever be the signature of man? No, 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 we refuse to accept that. We refuse to give hatred the last word because we know the power of love. We refuse to believe that cruelty will prevail because we have felt the strength of kindness. Where there is hatred, may we be loved. Where there is pain, may we bring healing. Where there is darkness, may we bring light. Where there is despair, may we bring hope. Make this, be make this bed a better place than begin with us.